Okay, great. So hello everyone. Um, glad you came today. So this is the training session for AS4 Anatomy. Um, I'm one of the co-supervisors. My name is Felicia Scott and I've been co-supervising AS4 Anatomy for 10 plus years. So um, I'm glad we're back, right? We really are back. We had a smaller uh, group last year, but we are back and hopefully we will be back at uh, South Campus in May on ground again. So um, a few things that will be new this year is that the Learning Center will once again be available to the students to study, but it will not be available until late February, the last day of February. So that Monday, uh, February 28th, that's when the materials will be available for you guys. So I'm just gonna take um, some time to go through um, the event as well as to uh, give you some information about what happens on the day of the actual competition, the actual instructions that your students are given once they're in the competition. And, and I'll say this, every document that I use today will be posted for you uh, on the AS4 Anatomy um, link on the Macomb Science Olympiad. So, uh, the document you see right now is just basically a document for me to remind myself to hit some pointers, but you'll also have access to this document as well. So the learning center where the models and the charts will be, well, mainly the models and answer keys will be available for your students to study. It is located on center campus, so you can't go to south campus. You have to come to center campus and it's located in building C. Uh, 116, so it's, it's in the same building as the library. Um, their hours are much more abbreviated uh, now, so it's open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 7, and then Friday and Saturday 9 to 3, and they're closed on Sunday. And please make sure I put the link for the Learning Center. Before you go, make sure you, one, you have to make an appointment to go but also to confirm the hours. So again, I think AS for Anatomy is one of the best events for your students to be involved in. Uh, the students love AS for Anatomy because it's something that they can relate to. You know, they can relate it to their own body. And so they really like uh, the event. My kids have been through AS for Anatomy, so I've been both a coach as well as a supervisor. I've been a parent where I didn't coach as well. And so I know, you know, what happens with the coaching, right? We think they go in there and they just know everything and then they come out and say, oh yeah, I did great. But we have to keep in mind that every kid that goes in and comes out usually does great. And so just keep that in mind. We really have some wonderful students who do this event. I mean, they're, they're, they're on it. I teach the college anatomy and I tell them all the time, I have anatomy students in elementary school who can run circles around you guys sometimes. So uh, that being said, let's just go over some things. One, when you go to the Learning Center, make sure you make an appointment. You cannot start making appointments until around February the 25th. And that's because right now, the person who used to be over the Learning Center uh, actually took another job and we have a new person coming on. And then the head tutor for biology actually retired uh, this year or last year. And so we don't have a head tutor now. So I have to make sure that the person who's taking taking over for running the entire learning center knows uh, the, the procedure for you guys calling, making appointments and everything. So you have to have a picture ID because a lot of the materials that you'll be checking out, they're very expensive and you can't check out everything at once. So typically before you get there, you need to have a, a, a study plan. Like today we're gonna work on the bones of the arm and that's all you work on because the appointments are limited to one to two hours at a time. In the Learning Center, you should only bring the students who are going to be working there. So you can't bring all your little kids with you. Um, no food, no drink, and they're really strict about that now, and you have to wear a mask over in the Learning Center. So in any building on Macomb's campus, you are required to have a mask. So keep that in mind, make sure you come prepared with that. Now, in terms of your students, 
Uh, the students do really well in this. Uh, young people are really like sponges when it comes to learning information. And so the key to A is for anatomy is to make it fun, right? So don't let it be a drag, you know, for the students when you're trying to coach them. It should really be something they want to do. You should be, you know, you should try to have games, uh, try to change up the studying each week or how often, you, based on how often you meet for the students uh, so that they stay interested in it. Now, the students will be answering a total of 88 questions. So there are 22 stations, um, one through 20, stations one through 21, they're all multiple choice. At each station for one through 21, there are four multiple choice questions. Station number 22 is the tiebreaker. And at the tie-breaking st uh, station, that's where they're required to spell. And spelling counts, right? And only the scientific name is acceptable as an answer. So a total of 22 stations, four questions per station. And stations 1 through 20 21, they're all multiple choice questions. And then at station number 22, it is they have to write out the answer. So you guys have to decide who's going to be the speller, right? And they need to know that before they get into the competition because they can't, they don't have enough time to actually be there struggling over the pencil as to who's going to write. They should also know in advance who's going to fill in the Scantron um, and the Scantron type answer sheet. And then also if they disagree on an answer, they should know who gets to decide. So for example, you may say one student is the expert on bones. So whenever there's some disagreement in terms of an answer, then you they defer to that student. While another student, another member of the team is the expert on muscle. So if there's some disagreement, then they defer to that person as the expert. So this year we have bones, muscles, and the respiratory system. So the respiratory system carried over from last year, but bones and muscles are new, okay? And so hopefully everyone has a copy of the study guide for AS4 Anatomy by now. And then what I did for you guys is I put together these study packets. And these study packets are just to get you started, right? So you can't use the study packet as the only thing you use to study. Because remember, my study packets are just pictures. Sometimes they're pictures of the models that we use in the competition. And then other times they're just pictures from a textbook that has been labeled so that you can see the correct structures. But the actual competition will mainly be composed of models. Every now and then you might, they may see a chart and very few pictures at all. Almost, usually there are no pictures on the exam, but every now and then um, we might use one or two pictures for the day of the competition. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over uh, some of the rules for the day of the competition, and I'm going to show you what is read word for word to the competitors during the event. And then I'll show you, give you a glimpse of what the study packets look like, and then I'll take any questions you have. So one of the first things you have to do is you have to be prompt, right? If one of the team members comes late or the team, the entire team, both students are late, they will not usually be allowed in the room, okay? And the reason why that is, is because you only get one minute at each station. So they get one minute to answer all four questions. And so if someone comes in three minutes late and we've already started the competition, that means that they they won't get to see 12 questions, right? Because we're already past three stations. So remember to be prompt. We will begin the competition exactly at the time that is designated. We do not have the luxury of waiting on any team. If one member is present, that member gets to come in. They'll need two number two pencils by each team, so they don't need a whole, uh, like a handful of pencils, just two. And we usually have extras in the competition ourselves for them, just in case a lead breaks or their eraser doesn't work. 
we have extras for them as well. We will supply the Scantron type answer sheet. And so the answer sheet we use is the grip, uh, zip grade form. And I'm going to show you an example of what that looks like in a minute. The students should practice with that form. So they have to learn how to shade in properly. No check, no X. And usually at the beginning when we read them the instructions, we actually go over this with them. And then the first couple of stations, we go around and check to make sure they are marking their Scantron type answer sheet correctly. Please do not provide your students with any labels. So any, you know, sometimes a student will come in and I'll say, oh, my coach gave me this to put on my Scantron. No, we'll already have that prepared. Students should practice using the Scantron answer sheets, filling them in properly. They should try to erase as few answers as possible. They have to pay attention to the numbering because the way that uh, zip grade Scantron type answer sheet is set up, it's not continuously one to 100. There are several different columns. So, and we try to remind them of this every time, right? Please make sure you check your numbers. They're not allowed to bring any clipboards, scrap paper, backpacks, purses, and that cell phone. Okay, so cell phones are not allowed in the event. They will get a total of 22 stations. The students will be answering four multiple choice questions per station in one minute, except for that 22nd station. That is a tiebreaker where they have to write out their answers. They're not allowed to talk, so this is a biggie. Right, because sometimes they'll they'll forget that they can't talk to one another. And so they have to have some nonverbal way of communicating, either pointing to the correct answer with the eraser on their pencil or using their fingers to communicate, but they cannot talk. This is probably a biggie for young people because they're so used to talking all the time. And so we constantly remind them you have to use some nonverbal communication. It's a totally standing competition. Students will move through the exam without sitting unless there's a medical exception, and we need to know that in advance. Uh, students are not allowed to touch anything, so they can't move anything. It's exactly as it is for every student that comes through that room, so they can't change the position of any model, picture, or chart. They will only be allowed to see that station one time, so there's no going back around. So if they miss something or forgot something, they don't get to go back. So students will not be allowed to return to any station. Parents and coaches will not be allowed in the competition room at any time. They will not be allowed before the competition nor at the end of the competition. Usually your student will come in one day one way, so they'll come in the front door and then they exit to the big stadium room usually. So we're usually in a room that we have two doors so and we put signs out and then we also make an announcement when we invite your students into the competition room. If a student has to use the restroom before coming to the competition, please make sure they do it. Don't just send them in the room, OK? Because if they cannot hold it and they need to leave. They will not be allowed to come back into the competition. Okay? So if they leave, they can't come back. And that means that their team is down one really important brain for, uh, for the competition. So any questions on what I just uh, told you? Any questions on that? Hello. Yes. I have a quick question. So um, I know you said there's no pictures. There are just models. So they're just like live in person models. Like, right. Is that what I'm like a structure? OK. Yes. Yeah, so that's why why. So so that you guys have access to the models that they're going to be tested on to do that. You have to go to the learning center. So okay. in the study packets, I do put pictures of some of the models, but not all of them. Great, but thank you. 99% of what they're tested on will be a model. Okay. And actually, since I'm here, I'll show you. So hopefully you can see this. So I have here part of the pelvic girdle. 
a bone called the coxa, and this is how they'll be tagged. So they'll have either pink, so we use white labels, neon pink labels, neon green labels, neon yellow, and then it'll have a number on it. And so it'll be positioned in a specific way, and they will not be allowed to touch it. They can't rotate it saying, oh, I didn't learn it that way. I need to turn it this way. They can't, okay? But mostly 99% of what they're tested on are models. And we have one or two charts, maybe, because most of the charts we use are huge. And so we have some smaller versions that they may be tested on. Any other questions before I move on? So now on the day of the competition for the student, this is what they're read. OK, so these are their directions. We don't change them. Um, the first thing we tell them to do is check their school name in the area name labeled name. We tell them to check their team number so they should know their team number to verify and this is labeled right near the student zip grade ID on the form, and I'll show you that form. Then they have to turn their answer sheet over, and they should see the numbers 85, 86, 87, and 88. And that's where they're going to write their tiebreaker questions. So we go through these, we read this first, so we go through it, we turn over the answer key to make sure that everyone sees where the tiebreaker answers go. Then they have to turn back around. So initially they're listening to me and then I tell them to turn around and take a look at the question number they are standing at because only one team will answer question number one first. Every other team will answer a different question. And so what they have to do is they have to circle the question they are standing at on their answer key. And this is where they will start and this is where they will end. They're not allowed to sit during the competition. And then I tell them most often the structure being tested for is at the end of a pointer, an arrow. On occasion, a question has a red star next to it, and that's basically to alert them that this type of question might be a fill in the blank question. There is no structure to go along with this question. So for example, part of what they have to know for the respiratory system is they have to know the pathway of an inhaled air mo molecule. And so they may have a question saying, uh, air just passed this structure. What is the next structure this air moves into? Okay, so that would be a red star or asterisk by that question to tell them, don't look for a model here. This is just a question. Please do not mark or write on the question sheet. No talking of any kind, including whispering, is allowed during the competition, but team members can communicate by pointing to their answer choice with their finger or the eraser end of their pencils. You're not allowed to pick up anything or touch anything. If you have a question, you raise your hand and then one of the facilitators will come over there and help the team. You will be allowed one minute at each station to answer the four questions. You will not be allowed to return to any station and they're always moving up in numerical se uh, sequence until they reach question number 88. The person at question number 88 goes to number one and there's usually a facilitator or supervisor standing right there between, between question number 88 and question number one to make sure they get to that question number one station quickly. Do not leave any question blank. If you run out of time, they're told to make an educated guess. Be sure to fill in shade or fill in or shade your answers. Do not circle them. And if they don't know the answer, they still need to shade something so that they can stay in turn and keep their numbering correct. Okay. So they're told all this during the before we even start the competition. We ask them if there are any questions and then we just say begin. And then everything after that is usually one minute, next station, another minute, next station until we complete the circuit. So the entire uh, amount of time allotted for the competition for each session is 30 minutes. And then we collect the scantrons. They're very polite. They say thank you or have a nice day. And then they exit the opposite end of the room. Okay. And so that's pretty much how this competition works. 
what's important for the coaches is to make sure you try to, you know, chunk the information up for the students in learnable chunks. Don't try to like do all the skeletal system in one week. It's just too much, right? Our students for skeletal and muscle, they get four weeks, a whole month to, to learn the skeletal system and the muscles. So keep that in mind. You don't want to overwhelm the students because yes, they are students. They're still in school. They're doing their school stuff. They're, you know, interacting with their friends. And so they just need to make sure that, you know, this is a fun learning experience for them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you one, the zip grade Scantron answer sheet, and you can actually download this answer uh, sheet yourself at www.zipgrade.com and it's the 100 question answer sheet. So I'm going to go there now. So the answer sheet looks like this. Okay. This is the one we use. And you can see at the top, so this is this this is where the team information is put and then Here's number one way down here. So one to 10, then 11 to 20, 21 to 40. Eight. Then we go all the way back up here, 41 to 70, and then 71 to, and we will be actually stopping here. So 88, 87, 86, 85. Those are my tiebreaker questions. So those will be where they write their answers on the back of the sheet, but their last multiple choice answer will be number 84. OK, so they have to get used to the numbering of the sheet. So sometimes students will try to go all the way across or they'll go one to 10 and then they'll come up here and do number 11 at 21. So they have to get used to this type of uh, answer key. Now, in terms of your um, study material, so there's a study packet for the skeletal system, and I'll pull this up for you right quick, so, and I get make sure. So here, these are basically images from a textbook where uh, the, the figures or the structures have been labeled for you. So this is the skeletal system packet. So this is enough to get you started. Then there's one for muscles. So all this will be posted on the AS for Anatomy uh, site. Okay, so again for muscles. Go to the slide. So oh, I should have went to the sorter. And so here at the end of this packet, I also have some uh, pictures of some of the models of muscles. Okay. Then, so that's muscles again enough to get you started before you until you can get over to the learning center and then there's a separate study packet for the respiratory system. So again here. Um, there are also pictures of the models at the end of the study packet and then there's the pathway of air through the respiratory system. So this is the pathway they have to know. And then their models and then their pictures. Okay. Now, the other thing I decided to add was this uh, PowerPoint that we use actually on ground. And this one has a search function for the skeletal system. And I really like it for students because let's say you guys are just studying the humerus this week. So you can just download this and then hit this little looking glass and just say humerus. And then basically all the images involving the humerus come up and then so that's the entire humerus and then the different surfaces that you have to know they're highlighted individually as you go through it. And so I like this because it isolates the structure you know you're looking for. So in some cases for the skeletal system, you're not just identifying the bone, you're identifying some surface on that bone. And so this uh, PowerPoint presentation is really helpful for that because it shows you it highlights that particular structure for you. So uh, that being said, that's pretty much all I have 
for you guys. Um, do you guys have any questions? Felicia, I wanted to add one more thing on uh, yes. answering the questions. So not every kid is going to start at question number one. Right. right? No. So let's say station one has question one through four. Yes. And station two has questions five through eight. Yes. So if your kid is on station B, then they will answer on question number five on the answering sheet. Yes. A lot yes. of kids, this is this is too difficult. You know, if they are not trained, they would just go ahead and mark question number one, even though they are physically at question five, because that's the first one in order, right? So make sure in all the events that your kids are that uses this Scantron like answer sheet, <clears throat> They are not guaranteed to be at number one. If there are two sessions, only one set of kids is going to start at number one. Everybody else is going to start at four, eight, whatever, 10, 12, 15. So they should know how to rotate. And if you do give them a test at home, yes, you know, make them start at number 16 for just for the sake of it, right? So they understand. First one you mark is 16. That is important. That's extremely important. And we do a check at initially we do a check to make sure they circle the right question number and that they're starting off at the right one. So we try to do that, but sometimes they'll, you know, they'll get a couple of stations down and then they'll re revert, right? <laughs> so yes, you have to you have to practice like that with them. And each station is marked with a number, correct? And it's visible so kids oh, yeah. carry first, right? Yes, yeah, so each station, so there basically there is a, a, a stand with a piece of paper in it and there are four question numbers, right? So it's question number one, A, B, C, D. Question number two, A, B, C, D. Question number three, A, B, C, D. Question number four, A, B, C, D. That's one station, right? And then at that station with that question, there's either one model or a couple of models, depending on, like you can have one model with all four questions on it. So on a leg, I might label four different muscles, but I may also have a leg and an arm where I label two muscles on the leg and two muscles on the arm. And so not only do they have to do that, they have to make sure that they're keeping track. They go, they look at the leg. OK, that's number one. They look at the question A, B, C, D. What muscle is that? And then they have to choose. Right, so it's not always just one model at a station. It could be more than one model at a station. Makes sense, thank you. You're welcome. Are the most of the questions identifying the yes. what? OK, so most 90, 99.9% of the questions are all identification with the exception of the pathway of air. OK, right, so you're lucky this you're lucky this year because last year we had the brain and they had to know brain functions, the parts of the, the different parts of the functions of different parts of the brain. So that, that was a little bit more right, but here it's muscles and um, the skeletal system all identification. Most of the respiratory system identification with some questions on the pathway of air. I have a question. Yes. Um, do we, um, how do we access those study packets that you were just going through? So they'll be on the um, anatomy. So A is for anatomy. So when you go to Macomb Science Olympiad, you click on A is for anatomy and that's where they'll show up. They're not there yet, right? So okay, they're, okay. They'll be there probably within a week or two. They'll be there. Okay. Actually, oh, they'll, they'll, there. Go ahead. They'll be there within within a day or two. Okay. Two, probably two days is max. So what what is out there right now is from last year. Yes. So if you if you go to the website, go to the. 2022 yeah, you, events and rules and then select anatomy. 
you will see the 2021 links are there. So we'll be replacing those very shortly. Can you see my screen, Manish? Yes, I can. OK, let me go. I'll show you what he's. Uh, yep. talking. A quick question, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> for for example, the, the humors that you had mentioned, when it's going to be uh, labeled or pointed at um, during the competition, if I saw one of the pictures had two different two um, phones that were, if anything, 2020 together. 2022 events let's... and rules. Real oh, quick, it, it, sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted Felicia to get to the right spot. Okay. Give, oh, yeah, give me right one here. second. Yep. Okay, yeah. so and then go, A for anatomy. Yeah. Okay, go ahead with your question, please. Uh, if two spots of the humerus that are next to each other, I mean, uh, I guess would there... I'm just wondering how the student is going to be able to tell that's not that specific spot and it's the one that you're pointing at if it's... So typically, would it be like a color? Would there be like a color around that portion? Because no. I kind of like the the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation. It had like the whole little color of it in there. No, and the arrow would be here. Oh, no. okay. So it'd be more like I'm gonna hand. You see the hand here? Yes, Sorry, we yes, can. yes, yes. Okay, so no, so it's always what the tip of the arrow is sitting on. And in some cases, like for like the the ulna, some of these structures are less than a half an inch away. Some of the surfaces we're pointing to. So what I usually try to do is to avoid having two arrows very close together. OK, yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure. OK, thank you. But it's not going to be color coded. No, 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 no color coding. Not even the skull, even though in the uh, study back. So in the study packet, you see the color coding because it helps you to start off, right? But the actual skull, it'll be like this, right? There is no, there are some colored numbers on here, but there'll just be an arrow pointing to an area on the skull. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. So, so I think I, I would like to highlight one thing that you just said. It's the tip of the arrow. Yes. So if you are just not paying attention and you pick something where the arrow where the the middle of the arrow is, then that's not what is being asked. Exactly. It may be correct in some instances, but in a fine fine areas, it it's the point that matters. Yes. I'm going to say one other thing. The tip of the arrow. Um, oh, and also for the multiple choice, usually there are two answers very close together, right? And then some of the other answers, two of them are very close together. And then two of, usually two of the answers are totally unrelated to that structure. Hello? Any other questions? So remember, if you have any questions, you send them to the Macomb Science Olympiad website so that everyone gets to see your question and then we answer it from there. So for those of you who are who are new, you can see on the screen there is a FAQ in the parenthesis clarification, right? <clears throat> you can go in there and ask the question. It's on the left side, right underneath the coaches workshop mm -hmm. recap. And the questions will be answered. So once you once you put a question there, it sends the administrator a copy of it and Felicia gets the question. She would answer the question that will go be go back to the administrator. And then administrator would put that question and answer so that everybody can see it. Generally speaking, if you ask a question, the clarification is put up in a, literally in two days. Yes. Once in a while, it may take a little bit longer if somebody's on vacation or you know whatever. But generally, the question is answered in no time, and 
it is very important to come back here and check this section because some clarifications are very important that you may have interpreted it differently than what it should be. Excuse me. Yes. Go ahead. Uh-oh, can't hear you. Hello? Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. For the district, I know last year they only did, or I'm sorry, the county, they only did first and second place. Um, would it be the same this year or not? Nah? No, it 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 will be more. I believe, I believe from what current registration is, it will be at least six, maybe seven. <coughs> so, what we have behind the scene is uh, some sort of a formula. So, how many teams are out there? The more teams there are out there, the more places we give out. So, I believe right now we are very close to seven. And more things oh. registered, the count will go up. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yep. So remember, you can't get to the Learning Center until Monday, starting Monday, February 28th. And I know that's after winter break. I'm sorry, because <laughs> I have kids in Chippewa Valley, so I know a lot of them are uh, on winter break earlier. But yes, you can't get to the Learning Center to the materials there until Monday, February 28th. And you have to make an appointment. And from my, again, I, I am a backseat driver, right? My, my kids are done through this, but uh, I can tell you the people who would have more visits to the Learning Center would absolutely do better than yeah. if somebody had five visits to the learning center compared to somebody had one, you will see a direct reflection into the scoring. Yes. That is absolutely true. Because the pictures uh, don't. Taylor had, Taylor had a question. Go ahead, Tina, go ahead. I am looking on the website right now and I see all the study packets. I see the respiratory system, but the rest of them are from last year. And yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be putting them up uh, hopefully within a day or two. Okay. So, yep. And make sure you get the new respiratory. Okay, so let me explain this. Make sure you get the new respiratory system packet because the pathway is on the new one. Last year, because I had to do a lot of different pathways and functions, it was in a separate study guide. Okay, but thank you so much. Sorry, I had to log out for a minute. I must not have. The pictures that. are the same, but the pathway isn't at the end on that respiratory study system. System study packet. Okay. Any other questions? All right, I appreciate everybody joining and a uh, special thank you to Felicia. I know you've been doing it for a long time and we really appreciate it. Thank you, have a great day everyone.